Hey everyone, I'm Zenith Priest, and welcome to my introduction for Many Minds Move as One, where I will give you insight into the nature of this spirit and show you how to chase off the invaders by turn 5. Many Minds is a moderate complexity control spirit with a fair amount of fear and defense. We start with a presence and extra beast in a land with beasts, and have an extra unique power over most spirits. Our playstyle will revolve around utilizing beasts, specifically for defense and fear generation. Being highly mobile, maximizing many minds' abilities can take some time to wrap your head around. Fly Fast as Thought upgrades push and gather abilities when dealing with beasts, allowing us to gather from or push to one land further than normal, and guarantees you always have beasts where you need them. With the joining of swarms and flocks, our sacred sites may count as beasts if we choose, adding to the beasts we'll already have on the island and some complexity to our decisions. Note that you can only have one sacred site in a given land, no matter how many presents is there. For growth options, our reclaim also grants a power, and our primary presence placement lets us put down a sacred site close by, which may also be a beast if we need. Our last option places a presence and a beast up to three away, adds an energy, and lets us gather a beast into any land up to two away from where we are. Since our sacred sites can also become beasts, this allows us the first of our mobility options. Our presence track starts off rather meager, with zero energy and only a single card play, but ends with moderate energy and even more generous card plays. One presence of note is two in on the card plays, the ability to pay two energy to gain a power. While that may seem like a lot since we don't start with a lot of passive energy, we will have a couple opportunities to use it. Many Minds has a couple innate powers. The teeming host arrives, mobilizes our beasts and sacred sites, getting them into position. Since our gather and push has been augmented for beasts, we can reposition them up to four away with the last threshold. Beset and confound the invaders provides defense and fear in a land with invaders. In addition to elements, each threshold will need a higher number of beasts, so keep that in mind while planning. For unique powers, a dreadful tide of scurrying flesh targets a land close by to a sacred site that has at least two beasts. Sacrificing up to half of them, we gain two fear and can skip an evader action per beast removed. This allows us to block a build or ravage we may not be able to handle, or predictively stops an explore. Even without skipping actions, it's worth considering if we have extra beasts to spare, possibly earning an extra fear card for the turn. Boon of Swarming Bedevilment targets another spirit, granting one defense per presence and allowing them to push one of their presence maybe to add that extra defense, or flee a land that won't be adequately defended. Guide the Way on Feathered Wings lets you move a beast close by up to two away, leading up to two to Han through some or all of the journey. We'll be using this primarily to set up counterattacks, while also getting a sacred site into position. Pursue with Scratches, Pecks, and Stings adds a fear and pushes a non-city invader for each beast past the first. Whether stopping builds or ravage depends largely on our board state. Finally, Ever Multiplying Swarm adds two beasts in one of our lands, expanding our options and revealing what may have been destroyed. Unless you pick up some more water powers, Boon of Swarming Bedevilment and a Dreadful Tide of Scurrying Flesh are your only ways of gathering more than one beast with your innate power, so keep them separated if you want consistent use once you reclaim. Putting this together, we have a highly mobile spirit capable of generating significant fear and utilizing beasts in a number of different ways. Our strategy here will primarily follow the bottom track only touching the top track to gain some passive energy, and our fear gains should see us hitting Terra level 3 by turn 5. Turning to the demo game, Many Minds requires the use of spirit tokens, but I've turned off the events to simplify our decisions during play. This gives us access to command beasts, and we'll use it to mimic Beast Prowl from the event deck, with each beast gaining fear if invaders are present, and moving to an adjacent land if not. We'll use it this way after we've used our other powers, even if there may be better ways to maximize its potential. Doing so will usually offset the extra fear card that's placed in Terra level 2. Alright, let's begin. Turn 1. We're looking to defend both explorers if possible, playing Guide the Way on Feathered Wings and Ever Multiplying Swarm. Take the middle option if you can reach the land without Tahan, opening up one energy and two card plays to facilitate gaining extra powers later on. Otherwise, take the last option to create a beast and gather your sacred site where you can reach. If they explore your starting land, you could play Pursue instead of Guide the Way if you prefer, and either way, beset and confound the explorer in that land for bonus fear. 
since we can rage, place a sacred site near the jungle to Han and guide them into the mountains. After the invaders build, we observe them move into the sands, but ignore it for now, adding a piece with the city to defend it next turn. Turn 2. Once again, we'll take the middle option again, opening up three card plays and placing a sacred site into the other land we need to defend. If we can't reach, we can gather it when the teaming host arrives. Playing our hand, we proceed. Having a lot of diversity with this set of powers, it's worth taking a moment to sift it all out. Order may be important, so consider your prerequisites and make sure they don't get in the way of your other power uses. The first thing to consider is defending your lands, so beset and confound the upper mountains since we already have enough beasts there. Boon of Swarming Bedevilment completes our defense, and we can push our single presence somewhere more active, which could be into one of our lands for an extra point of defense. Keep in mind that this only works in solo play, with allies we'll have to target one of them and alter our strategy accordingly. Since our starting land has yet to come up, we can add a Dreadful Tide of Scurrying Flesh in case they try to explore there, earning our first fear card. Otherwise, we can pursue them out of our jungles. Either way, that land should not be a problem next turn. Whichever we choose, we'll use the other power accordingly, gathering the teeming host where appropriate. For fear, Overseed's trade seems safer, adding extra coastal defense. Ravaging sees the lower mountains cleared and the upper city destroyed, earning our second fear card. With one town built in the lower sands, the invaders try to send explorers into the jungles, but our dreadful tide stops one of them coming through. Turn 3. With no cards in hand, we reclaim and gain a minor power. We're looking for animals primarily if we want to have consistent access to our innate powers. Having air or water and costing zero are also good considerations. Any sacred site requirements won't be a concern since we have an easy time creating them, giving us an even wider range of options. For specific effects, look for Dahan centric powers like Bat Scout or Promises of Protection that let you finish off buildings, or Beast powers like Guardian Serpents, adding beasts and general versatility to your kit. Having consistent access to gaining powers, we could also venture into powers without animals at the cost of diminished innate abilities. Effects that directly control invaders like Confounding Mists or Land of Haunts and Embers can be tempting, giving us a way to continue harassing invaders after Pursue enters the discard. Here, Scream Disease into the Wind provides our main elements and in solo play allows us to place a disease when we target another land. A really good choice to consider. Domesticated Animals goes berserk, adds fear, and has solid defense for one of our lands with buildings. The threshold won't be attainable until we pick up another moon, but that should be attainable in most games. Sap the Strength of Multitudes is another solid defense card, this one trading the potential beast for a cheaper cost. Flow Down River, Blow Down Wind offers some versatile control and has our secondary elements, so it could do if we didn't have better options. While Scream Disease and Domesticated Animals are both solid picks, one adds an extra layer of complexity to our decisions, and the other costs more than Sap the Strength. So for the simplicity of this demo, let's go with the cheaper defense power this time. If we were unhappy with our choices, or simply want even more options, we have the energy to gain another power here. With six powers, and potentially a seventh, we've got a lot of options to choose from. With only three fear to terror level two, let's take a calculated risk that the fear cards will handle the jungle and see if we can isolate our board. For that, we'll need to pursue the mountain town and guide some to Han, with Sap the Strength defending the coastal sand. After moving the town into the ravaging sands, take a slight detour with our guides to drop it to Han off in the jungle. This gives us slightly better odds that the fear card will work to our advantage. Beset and confound the sands to defend it and trigger terror level 2. And for the teeming host, Let's move the beast to land 8 into a more active spot like the coastal wetlands. Finally, let's command beasts to earn an extra fear card. Belief takes root, adds defense to our lands, but more importantly, grants us some energy. Dahan and Heartened will answer our jungle problem.
and retreat gives us the option to push inland invaders out, but we'd rather the town be destroyed. Ravaging takes out the remaining towns, and with nowhere to build, the invaders explore into the wetlands. Turn 4. With only the wetlands to worry about, here is an excellent time to scale up. To start, let's play for another minor power. Bird's Cry Warning is an excellent pick, having both major elements and adding to Haunted Control. While any of the rest could work in a pinch, we can easily overlook them this time. Now that we know what powers we're working with, let's choose a growth option. Most of the time, the middle option will be the way to go, opening up four card plays, but if you weren't able to find what you need, you could reclaim, or if you missed an air power but need to gather more than one beast, you could reveal it from the top track. If you had to use the third growth option turn one, you may need to use it again here to play your hand and open up that air element. Since we have what we need, we can open up four card plays and empty our hand, placing the sacred site with the wetland explorer. We can use our boon to put our lone presence somewhere that could be relevant, even though we don't need the defense, and use Bird's Cry Warning to set up to Han for the Ravage next turn. The rest of our powers will create as much fear as possible, gathering the teeming host into the upper wetland before defending it and getting a fear card from the third tier beset and confound, and finishing up with a dreadful tide for another fear card. Dahan Raid will help clear the wetlands. And beset by many troubles adds some needless defense. With no ravages, the disease token and our dreadful tide blocks both builds, leaving the invaders with just a sands excursion. Adding beasts to the coastal wetlands, we're ready to send the invaders slinking back home. Turn 5. With victory in sight, we'll need to reclaim to see it through getting one more minor power in the process. Real quick, Sucking Ooze is the right price for some extra fear that doesn't have animals. Quick in the Earth struggles makes us a little redundant on fear, or we can take out some heavier lands that we could otherwise defend but don't have the Dahan to clear. Call to Tend is also redundant for Dahan movement, but without air, birds and guides should be sufficient. And Drought very effectively gives us an offense stat worth talking about, despite not having any of our elements, with a threshold we can hit from our starting hand. If the game were to continue, I'd probably take Drought, but Quick in the Earth's Struggle is a simple way to defend what we need and end the game. Again, if the game were to continue, we're only one fear away from tier level 3, and could easily earn two fear cards at that threshold with Dreadful Tide and Pursue. Some final thoughts for many minds move as one. I like this strategy because it offers a lot of versatility in your options, gaining powers fairly often and with multiple ways to put them together. Some games will go past turn 5 if land 2 never explores, none of your terror level 3 cards go your way, and you don't find a power like Drought, be it overt or more subtle. But it's statistically rare, and you'll be in a really strong position regardless. When moving beasts, consider your sacred sites first to optimize your position. Many times, order is important for proper execution. Look at your chain of events before making the first move. And as a final reminder, this is a solo strategy. Boon of Swarming Bedevilment will need to go to another spirit if possible. Alright everyone, that's all I've got this time. Hope you gained some insight, and good luck in your next games.